If you own a business right now and you're trying to scale that business to seven figures and get it on track for eight figures, this is how you do it. So I've talked a lot in the past about how a lot of people try and scale their business by from six figures, mid six figures to seven figures and beyond by doing the exact same thing that they did that got them from zero to mid six figures right now. And that's incorrect. And truth be told, you've done the hard part. Okay, you've done the most difficult part of the of the business world, what most people consider to be the most difficult thing, which is getting off the ground. And you've gotten from zero to six figures, mid six figures, maybe even seven right now. But to take that leap from 1.5 million, from a million dollars to 9 million to 10 million, all the way to eight figures and beyond, you have to, you have to obtain a different skill set. You have to understand different things and you have to operate the business in a different way. See, what I call the promoter mindset is the mindset that gets people from zero to mid six figures and sometimes maybe even seven if they're in a good market and they get pretty lucky. But the operator skill set is what you get when you go from mid six figures to the end of seven and on track to eight. And that operator skill set is a different skill set. And like Dan Sullivan says, the, the skills that got you out of Egypt are not the skills that are, that are going to get you to the promised land. So you're not going to get from zero all the way to $10 million to the point where you're able to make an exit eventually at 50 or 100 with the exact same skills. Someplace, somewhere you have to level up. And this is where all the guys at the top, the Tony Robbins and um, you know the Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg, all these guys at the very top of their games, this is what they've done differently than everybody else. Okay, This is what they understand about their own minds and how they understand scale. So they know that there are phases of every business and they don't do the same thing for every business that um, they try and grow and that they're a part of. So I'm going to share with you the billionaire mindset. I'm going to share with you, kind of deconstruct the mind of somebody at the top and deconstruct the skills that you need once you move past that six-figure mark and, and move into seven and move on, on your way to eight. Okay, so here's how you do it. And I know this because I've studied them very hard. I've had mentors that are doing the exact same numbers that they are. You just don't hear about a lot of them. Um, some of them you do. But I've gotten the first-hand experience from these guys directly on how to do this, and I want to share it with you. Okay? So let's get into it. So you look at the skill set of people kind of like, um, like a tower, pretty much. Okay? Like, think about it like a tower of Lego bricks, right? Those, the building blocks that everybody knows about. So on this tower are different things, and there are different phases for each of them, and each one has different colors, and it looks something like this, okay? Here's what the billionaire mind looks like when you break it down to the very bare bones and the skills that you have to have when, when you're moving up, okay? Now, I'm going to start at the top because this one's very easy. This is what everybody knows, and it's very easy to learn, and everybody teaches this. This is what the people starting out at uh, want to know about. And this is what the people who are starting their businesses and in that promoter phase and just want to get off the ground, this is what they study. Okay, these are your tactics and your strategies. And at this phase, this is like your Facebook ads, your ability to build funnels, your ability to build a sales page and write a sales letter, all of those things that are kind of on the surface level and, and the tactics where they really depend on you putting in more time to get more out of. Okay, that's kind of how I break it down and understand those. So everything at the top in this tactic and strategy phase right here, it all works. It all just works to varying degrees. And anybody can get pretty good at one of these things overnight. This isn't stuff that's difficult to understand. It's not difficult to you know, employ this stuff in your business. It all works. If you want to use YouTube ads, then go ahead. Use YouTube ads. I'm sure it'll work for your business. I know it'll work because I use them right now. Go ahead and use Facebook ads. I know it'll work because I use them right now. These are things that you can learn in a day. And it's all going to work to varying degrees. So this is all stuff that you can add to your business and kind of put on top and try it out and give it a go. But it's not stuff that's going to make a huge lever moving difference in your business. This is, again, still in the promotion phase. And you're still just promotion, promotion, promotion and hustling and grinding all the time to try and get some scale. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is they try and use these strategies to get them from zero all the way to the end when it doesn't work like that. You have to have the rest of this tower right here. And you have to have all of this together to get yourself where you need to be to get your business to where it wants to be. 
right? Because your business is only going to get as far as you are good at everything right here. And if you're only good right here, that's, that's as far as your business is going to get. If you're only good at making the ads, if you're only good at building sales letters, if you're only good at building funnels and making VSLs, whatever it is, you're only going to get that far. So you got to have the rest of it. Okay, so we'll move down to the bottom. We'll start out there. Now the bottom is probably my favorite one. Okay, this is something that I've worked really hard on for myself. And it's not something that I teach people. It's just something that I let my clients know about. And we talk about it in our private client group. And I kind of let them do it on their own. I'm not the expert on this by any means. I just know that it's something that I had to get in check. And I didn't make any progress until I got it in check. And that is mental awareness. So mental awareness is your self-awareness, your evaluation of your weaknesses and your strengths. And playing to your strengths, playing to the things that you're good at. And putting effort behind the things that you're good at, and then putting problem solving behind the things that you're not good at to try and get good at those. And understanding that, hey, if I'm not good at this thing, then I need to stop investing in this thing that relies on me being good at this. Right? And, and your ability to evaluate where you are personally at so that you can grow as a person, which inevitably grows your business because the business is a byproduct of you, again, at how good you are. And the better you are, the more strengths that you elevate on and, and play to and capitalize on and the more weaknesses that you quell, the better your business is going to do. So when you have the mental awareness and you know your strengths, right, and you know your weaknesses, then you can optimize that. You can optimize, again, play to the strengths, optimize the weaknesses, and make them better. And then your business as a byproduct of you gets better when you do that. So the next thing right here is really going to be just kind of your identity in general right who who do you want to be so when I say identity in general I mean literally who are you who do you want to be who do you see yourself as because whoever you see yourself as is who you're going to attract and it's the underlying thing that's gonna come out in all of your marketing it's gonna come out in everything that you write for your business it's gonna come out in every every piece of material that you put out for your business you personally are going to come through a little bit in all of it and I don't care if it's a personal brand I don't care if it's an e-commerce brand it doesn't matter what it is a little bit of you is gonna come out in everything that you put out and if you don't see yourself as worthy of certain successes if you don't see yourself as able to mentally tolerate a certain amount of revenue or a certain amount of cash flow and if you see yourself as somebody who doesn't deserve success then you're not going to get it and you're not gonna get the cash flow if you don't think that you can tolerate it if you say oh I want all this stuff and I want all these grand things and all this and that but you don't mentally prepare for it and you don't deep down believe that you deserve it you're not gonna get it and I don't say that to sound all woo woo or anything like that but there's a story in the Bible of a, of a farmer who he always pr he always prays for rain he always wants rain to come down and he's he's always in a drought and he's always praying to God he's like God I, I need rain I need rain really badly and he prays for rain all the time and and God says to him I think God says to him he says you pray for rain all the time but you don't till your fields in the way that it needs to be to prepare for that rain you do nothing with your livestock to prepare them for rain you don't show me that you can accept the rain and and that you're able to actually take full advantage of the rain if I was to give it to you and I don't know if that's more of a of a, of a story or, or a message or what it is but it makes me realize that I'm gonna get what I prepare for I'm gonna get just as good as I believe that I deserve and if I don't believe that I deserve all of this and and truly believe it and show that I deserve it then I'm not gonna get it and so that's kinda of the mental part of this game and it's again kinda of woo woo and I don't mean for it to come off like that but your identity is gonna come through in everything that you put out and you're gonna get as much as you think that you deserve so your mental cognition is your problem solving your prioritization your ability to innovate and your ability to think ahead okay so a lot of people they get into business and they find a system that works really well for them and then they put that thing out to market using that system whatever it is whether that's putting the product up on a sales page sending people people to the sales page getting them on a list of people who have bought that thing and then selling them more stuff whether that's putting a lead magnet out there and then having people opt in for that and then sending people more stuff to buy something else however you do it they find that system that works well and then they try and stack a bunch of stuff on top of it 
And so what happens is they get really bogged down and then their mental cognition doesn't prioritize anything but more, more, more. And so they can't do any problem solving as far as growth goes because they're so bogged down. And so the solution is really to grow the business from the inside out. It's to make it more efficient, take that system that worked well for you, and instead of adding stuff on top, you optimize that system and you make it more efficient, you make it quicker, you make it more low cost, you optimize it, okay? And that's how you grow from the inside out. That's kind of that inside out scaling. That's how operators scale. And so we do this in the mental cognition phase, okay? And this is where we think ahead and, and by thinking ahead, this applies to any part of the business, right? This applies to what you decide to use as a bonus, right? What are people asking you for that you think in your mind, okay, I'm seeing a lot of customer service tickets for this thing. We need to offer that as a product in the future. We need to offer it as a bonus for this thing right here that'll make that system better. And then your prioritization of specific tasks. What needs your attention right now? Does your content and your social media strategy, does your entire business hinge on that? If the answer is no, then you need to prioritize other things over that before you focus on that, okay? If your innovation isn't where it needs to be, if you're not able to innovate in the way that you're making things more efficient in your business, and you're looking at every piece of your business as a science experiment, and when it goes to market, you evaluate it, and then you innovate new ideas to make it better. That doesn't mean creating brand new products, but it just means prioritizing the things that your customers want. What are they saying that they want? What are they telling you that they don't want? And then what do you prioritize? Do you prioritize their response? Or do you prioritize other things that you think will get you scale? Because people are coming to you right now. And if your mental cognition is not where it needs to be as far as your problem solving and your prioritization and your innovation goes, then you're not going to be able to make that next step. Because adding stuff onto the business is only going to get you so far. But when you can take the results of the, the problems that you've put to market and the solutions that have come back in the form of data, and then you take that data and then you innovate new solutions to make the weaknesses better, like we did in the mental awareness part for ourselves, but now we do it for the business, and then you prioritize the things that you need to make better in your business, that's when you actually make that leap, right? That's when you actually take that next step and you move into that operator territory. And you move from being a promoter to somebody who's actually taking his business, solving problems inside the business, and growing from the inside out so that someday you can pull yourself out of the business. Okay, and that's where that mental cognition piece comes in. It's really just how good you are at taking the responses that your market gives to you, prioritizing them, and then innovating new solutions for them. Okay, innovation doesn't mean brand new products. It doesn't mean finding new markets and new things that nobody's ever discovered before. It means innovating new ways to make your systems better so that they get you better results over the long term, right? And so that's what we're looking to do in the mental cognition piece. And, and when you're not there, then your business is very fragile. It's very flimsy. And you're getting feedback from the market. You're getting these, you're putting problems out there to the market. And the, the problem in this case is just an experiment. This can be, let's say, a new sales letter. And then you put that out there. And then the solution comes through when your market gives you feedback. And then you take that solution and you say, okay, what do I need to prioritize here? They're clicking to the page. They're scrolling past the headline in the main part. But on the product part, they're clicking away from it. So what do I need to change on the product part? And then you prioritize that, okay, I need to change something on the product part. I don't need to add 50 different Shopify apps because people are clicking out of here. Right? And so that's where that mental cognition comes through. Because you're able to analyze your processes and then fix what needs to be fixed by the prioritization. And then you innovate new ways to solve that thing. So if people stop on the product part right there, maybe they don't like the price. Maybe we need to add a guarantee. Maybe we need to add a bonus or some risk reversal or a payment plan, right? New things that you can innovate on that piece right there. If they click to the product page, but they don't even scroll at all, then it's probably a page loading problem, right? How can we move things over, make the page more speedy? How can we improve our speed score, right? Can we take pieces of code off and put them into Google Tag Manager? If they scroll all the way to the bottom and they get all the way down and they're not ready for it, how can we innovate new ways to get them to go back to the page? Clearly they were interested. Why don't we put some contingency plans in place for the people who click on it and start the process, but they don't go all the way through, right? Get them to go back to the page that they clicked on. Now, there's always new ways that you can do things and your mental cognition has to be in a place where it just comes naturally to you. And the solution can't always be adding more stuff on top and buying more products and hiring more people, right? It can't always be that. And that's how you actually move up without overwhelming yourself with all the stuff in promotion and doing that constant hustle. Thing. Next part of this is business principles. And this one 
is probably my favorite. So this is where you basically take the prioritization part from the last one and you make it like a big part of the business and you look at it as like the in the in the general sense of the business. So this is mine. These are my business principles. I'm customer focused and obsessed. I'm cash flow focused and then I I aim for efficiency in everything that I do. So really this is up to you. I mean you can do whatever you would like in this business principles part. But this is really where the principles that you have mentally, and again, it goes back to all of this, and you can see how everything here builds on the thing below it. So, like, identifying the strengths and weaknesses of yourself is also what you do in the mental cognition part. You identify the strengths and weaknesses, prioritize them, and then innovate on them, right? And then and you do that for the business specifically, and then right here, the business principles, these principles come through when I know my identity, when I know who I am. And when I know who I want to be, the, and the business principles are really just going to kind of be like a microcosm of who I am as a person, right? So if I'm not actually obsessed with customers, that's not going to come through in my principles. If cash flow is not my number one priority, then right here, then it's not actually going to come through in the principles. And if efficiency really isn't one of my strengths and it's not really my identity, then it's not going to come through in business principles. And I'm not going to get my clients the results that they want. I'm not going to get my own brands the results that they want. It's a mess. So the business principles are basically the things that you prioritize over everything else. And it's the things that you aim for and the things that you obsess over in your business. Now, I don't have much to say on this one because this one's really up to you. Business principles of billionaires, of the people at the top, of operators, are mostly this type of stuff. And it's very long-term thinking. So it's not ever short-term growth. It's not ever looking at the business just as a way to put money in and get some money out. It's always a very long-term thing because when you are long-term focused, all this stuff comes through. You're focused on cash flow over the long term. You're focused on efficiency. These are ways that you can make the business better without adding stuff on top, without just throwing a bunch of money at ads or other experts. And the business principles right here for the customer-focused one, the, and, and then customer-focused and obsessed, that's prime example of a long-term mindset. When you look at the business over the long term and you understand that if you give the customer a better experience right now, they're going to end up having a better experience all the way down the road and continue to buy from you. You understand that all you have to do if you want to make uh, you know, 100 grand, if you give the customer a good enough experience that they continue to buy with you and they're worth an average of $1,000 to you, all you got to do is get 100 people on your email list. That's it. right? And so that's where all of this stuff shines through. And these are really kind of the, what's, that's, that's a long-term focus, and that's the main business principle that I think of the people at the top. And this is what I've tried to adopt in my business, is just looking at everything over the long term and not looking at anything short term, starting with the end of eventually exiting the business. And when I have a list of people on my list that I'm so focused on and obsessed with giving them the best experience possible that they spend a ton of money with me, my lifetime value increases to the upteenth amount, my cash flow increases because I'm getting more customers in the door on the front end because I'm giving them a better experience. And I know that all of the money that I'm making right now is just going to go right back into the business. So it increases cash flow even more because I'm looking for the long term, not just pulling money out right away. And it increases my efficiency in the business because I'm able to focus on the things that are going to last for the long term. I'm going to focus on making a sales process more efficient and making my ads more efficient, spending less to get more. right? And all of those things are long term. So those are my principles, and you can have your own, but I think that the guys at the top, they focus long term, and they start with the end in mind. So the next one is going to be business disciplines, and business disciplines, you'll notice right here, we get we start to get different colors on the blocks, okay? So this one right here, business principles, that's a firm foundation. Mental cognition, that's a firm foundation, and awareness are all firm foundations. That's the entire thing. There is one thing on each of them that we focus on, and they build off of each other. But then this one right here is where we get a little bit more granular. And so disciplines is like your marketing, your management, your law, your tax, your analytics, your sales, all those disciplines inside of your business. Okay, And the way that billionaires are different than other people is they focus on all of the disciplines. And they're kind of a jack of all trades, but they know them well enough to understand them. They might be a master of marketing and a master of sales. But they understand the analytics, they understand the law, and they understand managing a team. And all of the stuff they have maybe a team for and somebody to help them out with, right, to make it easier on them. But at the core, they know this stuff. 
right? And so they know the disciplines, not like the back of their hand, right? But they, they're a jack of that trade. They understand it and they can answer enough questions on it to have an understanding of it in their business to then look at it in a long-term sense. On the business principles, if they are focused on the long-term, they're not going to hire somebody and manage a team of people that they don't see hiring for 10 years, right? They're not going to build a, a team of salespeople who are just focused on short-term wins and hard sell on everything so the people regret their experience. They're not going to do that. And the business principle of long-term you know, efficiency in their business moves back to the analytics part. They understand the analytics, so then they can make their marketing more efficient because they understand the analytics here of saying, hey, you know, we're getting a ton of clicks, but nobody's buying on the page. Must be a problem with the page. Or people are seeing the ad. ton of people are viewing the ad and reading more, but nobody's clicking. Must be a problem with the ad. Or they're clicking through to the cart, but nobody's converting on the cart page. Well, must be a loading problem or the price is too high. Maybe we need to add blah, blah, blah into the process. Right? And so they use all of the disciplines that they're focused on and, and that they prioritize down here to make these disciplines better and to make each of these things as efficient as possible and, and focused on the long term, right? The, the law team that they employ is not going to be a team that is just the cheapest team out there that they can just have on a retainer just to say that they have them to counter any threats. They're a team that they're actually going to build a relationship with, focus on the long term. And this is a team that they could potentially use to exit the business down the line, right? And so all of these disciplines, they know all of them, but they're not masters of maybe all of them. They, they might be master of two or three, you know, but they know all of them enough to use these discipline or use these principles to make these things better. Okay. And then on the top is again, the tactics and the strategies, the tactics that they employ for the marketing, the tactics that they employ for the management, the strategies that they have in the sales teams, the strategies that they have for analytics, right? All of those things are very granular and it's, you know, I, I don't have specific examples for you, but they use most all of them and they find which one is going to work best for their business. And when I say works best, I mean works best because they're all going to work, but which one works best for you? And so that's how billionaires grow their business. That's how billionaires have gotten to the place with, where they're at right now. And you can get to that exact place by doing this and starting with yourself, starting with your ability to solve problems prioritize the right things in your business and innovate on the feedback that you get when you put things to market, right? And then the business principles are going to affect basically everything from the top up or from the middle up because the, the principles that you have in your business, if you're not long-term focused, then you're not going to have as much success as somebody who is. If you don't provide your customers the best experience with your marketing, then that's going to come through in your management, right? And you're not going to hire the best team that's going to help them out. You're not going to hire the best sales team. They're going to hard sell them, like we said, and not give them a good experience, so they might not come back, which could hurt cash flow. And then the analytics part, you know, just goes along with all of that. You know, you're, you, when you're looking long-term, you care about analytics. When you're not looking long-term, you don't know your numbers at all. Right? And so all of these things are how billionaires grow their businesses by starting with themselves. And if you want to grow your business the way that they have and move into for, or, and move from that promoter phase to the operator phase, from mid six figures all the way on track for a billion dollars, this is how you do it. So I hope this helped. I hope this gave you some clarity and how you can kind of model the people at the top and get the same type of results that they get on a regular basis just by starting with yourself. So hope that helped.